You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. So conservatives thinking that they are oppressed for mainly being like white Christian straight people has something that has been going on in particularly American politics for a long, long time. Not exclusively, but it has become more prominent thanks to the presidency of Barack Obama and the huge backlash to that in conservative circles. Obviously basically paving the way for people like Donald Trump and things like that. But something conservatives like to do constantly is basically say that being a conservative in America today is basically like being a Jew in 1930s Germany. And more recently with the pandemic, now conservatives are also saying being forced to wear a mask, for example, or have some sort of, you know, vaccine passport, that is also like being a Jew in 1930s Germany. And they don't mind using the iconography of that. Like Stars of David, they will make themselves and pin on their chest while constantly talking about how oppressed these people are. So I want to talk about this in two ways. Basically, like I said, the people who believe being a conservative is like being a Jew in Nazi Germany and the people who believe participating in public health measures to stop the spread of a deadly virus is also like being a Jew in 1930s Germany. And that one in particular has the added element of being a lot more sinister since a lot of the times when there are pandemics in the world throughout history, the people that are blamed most are the Jews going back to the plague of Justinian in the 400s. So all of that coming up for you today, please like the video and in the comments, let me know, do you know anyone in your own personal life who likes to say these types of things? Like say how they're oppressed for being like a white, straight, Christian person. Let me know down in the comments. Also, check out my social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out the subreddit down in the description. Also, check out my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra. And also consider becoming a patron. Obviously, topics like this are demonetized. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, the benefits of which are getting access to the Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. Also, I'm moving to Vietnam this Thursday. I don't know when this video will be out. And I'm going to be posting some exclusive content on the Patreon from Vietnam. Probably just talking about, you know, what it's like to live there and stuff. So if you care about any of that, consider becoming a patron and let's get into the video. So I've basically been thinking about making this video for a while, but this is what prompted it more recently. There's a guy called Nick Adams USA and a lot of his tweets in terms of how much he worships Trump seemed to be like even a parody, but he also tweeted this the other day, but quickly deleted it, which is funny because these guys feel comfortable enough saying it, but when they get a pushback, they always delete it. So basically, Dark Brandon gave a speech the other day where he had like the US military behind him and he attacked basically MAGA conservatives, leading to MAGA conservatives to having an absolute meltdown. But have a look at this. I don't think Hitler ever said anything about the Jews that was as straightforwardly evil as Biden said about me as a Trump supporter last night. Lie after lie after lie. Encouragement to make other people fear me. And we know what fear does to groups. Disgusting. And I tweeted the constant minimizing of the Holocaust by conservatives constantly comparing themselves to Jews in 1930s Germany or being treated worse than them has to be some sort of Holocaust denial at this point, right? Which is something I firmly stand by because there's only two reasons why you'd think this. Like even if you thought Dark Brandon was attacking conservatives and trying to marginalize conservatives, jumping from that to Biden has said worse things about conservatives than Hitler said about the Jews is totally insane that either you are basically a Holocaust denier at this point and you actually don't think the Holocaust was that bad and you don't think Hitler said absolutely disgusting things about the Jews which translated into the most mechanical butchering of a group of people in human history or you barely know anything about the Holocaust so we're going to get into that topic a tiny bit later about how a lot of Americans don't actually know much about it at all but again totally totally disgusting and the fact that these people think they're oppressed in America is already ridiculous but the fact that some of them think they're as oppressed as white conservative straight people in America in 2022 
as Jewish people were in 1930s and 1940s Germany, again, is insane. And in my opinion, is basically Holocaust denial. So if this was just like a one-off thing, and I just seen this guy do it, I obviously wouldn't make a video. I would just say, that's just one crazy dude who's basically being disgusting. But this is very, very common in conservative circles. So there's actually two celebrities who use this example, and that is Gina Carano and Tim Allen. So let's get into this before talking about the belief that conservatives are more oppressed than Jewish people in Nazi Germany. So back in 2017, Tim Allen condemned for comparing Hollywood to 1930s Germany, the Toy Story star made the comments on an episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live last Thursday in response to Kimmel asking him about attending Donald Trump's inauguration. You've got to be careful around here. You're going to get beat up if you don't believe what everybody believes. This is like 1930s Germany. And then Gina Carano infamously also said something about this. So uh, a Newsweek article about Gina Carano not having a contract renewed for The Mandalorian. So uh, Gina Carano, a vocal Donald Trump supporter, came under heavy criticism after posting an offensive Instagram post that read, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political view? So of course, as is tradition, and as you're going to see throughout this video, people who often compare themselves to Jews in Nazi Germany also have a history of posting anti-Semitic things on their social media. So of course, for a lot of Jews, you are ethnically Jewish. So just like being, you know, any different ethnicity, this is not a choice. People are hating you just for being who you are, not based on your beliefs, not based on what you've done, just who you are. Conservatives are confusing themselves because being a conservative, you might say, well, that's who I am. But you saying terrible things, you doing terrible things, and people not liking you for that, of course, is not the same as discrimination and racism, as if that needs to be pointed out. But also the belief that one of the most powerful groups in the entire United States, Christian conservatives, are like Jewish people in Nazi Germany, people who had been dehumanized for centuries and millennia, where loads of people in Europe absolutely hated them anyway, just because they were Jewish, and you say you're like that, is ridiculous. And on Gina Carano's point, I also think it's just basically denying widespread anti-Semitism. So it says, obviously, Jews were beaten in the street not by Nazi soldiers, but their neighbors. So most people didn't realize that to get to that point where Nazi soldiers could round up thousands of Jews, the government first made people hate their own neighbors for simply being Jews. So while there's a degree of truth in that, in terms of that, of course, Nazi propaganda blame Jews for everything. Of course, a big strain of this, was saying that Jews were trying to take over the world, take over the West, and they were using communism, as it was known, Judeo-Bolshevism to the Nazis, to this end. And to make a lot of people get on side with anti-Semitism and these policies against the Jewish people, you of course had to do a campaign of propaganda. But what stuff like this leaves out, and this is a common thing I've seen before, people in Nazi Germany only started believing horribly anti-Semitic things because the Nazis brainwashed them, essentially. When that is not true, the Nazis were able to get into power because they preyed on anti-Semitism, which has been absolutely widespread in Europe for thousands of years. They capitalized on that, and of course they exploited their own brand of anti-Semitism, mainly focusing on the communist angle, but of course they also exploited Christian anti-Semitism, and of course the language of Martin Luther, basically the father of Protestantism, who was insanely anti-Semitic himself, to help get Christians on side with them. So while the Nazis obviously would have changed some people's mind, they preyed on explicit anti-Semitism that was absolutely rife throughout Europe at the time. And Gina Carano, if you know your history, you also know loads of Polish people, Ukrainians, Croatian people as well, happily collaborate with the Nazis because they all hated Jews and wanted to kill them. They didn't need Nazi brainwashing. People like Henry Ford had a whole newspaper dedicated to anti-Semitism. So that's another thing these people don't understand. But that's why it's often not surprising 
that they engage in this Holocaust revisionism denial or trying to paint themselves as Jews in Nazi Germany while also being racist against Jews. Politics are not like an intrinsic quality. They're a reflection of your morals. You can change your politics through maturing into an adult, through having different life experiences, from meeting new people, from having different jobs. You can change those things. Persecuting people based on ethnicity and skin colour is nothing alike to demonising people with abhorrent beliefs. Are you going to start saying that prosecuting fascists is like persecuting Jews in Nazi Germany now because that is the line of logic you can derive from statements like this. So we are going to get into like this medical anti-Semitism in a bit, but you guys might be wondering, why does it seem so common that high profile conservatives will just say absolutely ridiculous things about the 1930s in Germany and compare themselves to Jewish people for being Christian conservatives? Well, something that was published in 2020 was pretty damning. So nearly two thirds of US young adults unaware that six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust. So more than one in 10 believe Jews caused the Holocaust, which is absolutely shocking. A new survey has found revealing shocking levels of ignorance about the greatest crime of the 20th century. According to the study of millennial and Gen Z adults aged between 18 and 39, almost half could not name a single concentration camp or ghetto during the second world war. Almost a quarter said they believed the Holocaust was a myth, which is absolutely insane, or has been exaggerated, or they weren't sure. One in eight said they definitely have not heard of, or didn't think they had heard about the Holocaust. More than half said they had seen Nazi symbols on their social media platforms or in their communities, and almost half had seen Holocaust denial or distortion posts on social media and elsewhere. So nationally, 63% of respondents did not know 6 million Jews were murdered during the Holocaust, and more than one in three thought that two million or fewer had been killed. 11% of respondents across the US believed that the Jews had caused the Holocaust. Almost two thirds of American millennial and Gen Z adults believe Holocaust education should be compulsory in school. Seven out of 10 said it was not acceptable for an individual to hold neo-Nazi views. So obviously the people I've been showing you so far have been older conservatives, like Gina Carano, I think must be in her late 30s. Tim Allen must be nearly in his 70s. I don't know how old that Nick Adams guy is. I think he's in like his 40s or 50s. So of course that sort of lines up with the millennial thing for people like Gina Carano, but I find that study absolutely damning. Like some of those numbers are absolutely shocking. And I think in America, it's probably worse with a lot of these things because of America as a landmass being divorced from the realities of World War II. Like growing up in the UK, it's kind of weird that even as someone myself who's 26, the shadow of World War One and World War Two is like very much alive. In terms of both wars, there are war memorials everywhere. I could probably name six that are local to me. I drove from London to Scotland in summer 2021 and just the amount of war memorials I would see in like the most obscure rural parts of the country, I think shows you how much of a legacy the conflict has. So although Holocaust denial is absolutely rampant in certain parts of the world, I would expect that the UK and maybe parts of Europe, you'd have less people who haven't heard about it. That's not to say there isn't denial going on because there's plenty of it in Europe as well. That study was helpful, not only outlining, but people who don't even know about the Holocaust. It shows you how they are influenced by Holocaust denial, which can be Holocaust revisionism. People saying they only thought like 2 million Jewish people died instead of 6 million. People saying they didn't know one concentration camp. So their own knowledge of the Holocaust is just some vague notion that, yeah, Jews were persecuted for being Jewish and then they were sent to camps and many were killed. But some of them do not understand the absolute enormous scale of this. And I'm not going to let most of these people off the hook because I'll show you later on that loads of them are anti-Semites as well. I think it shows how this kind of comparison can spread without people saying like, come on, let's not exaggerate. Like that's insane. Like even if I personally think conservatives in America are like persecuted for their beliefs, comparing us to Jews in Nazi Germany is just absolutely ridiculous and disgusting. If you don't have the frame of reference and you know nothing about it, why would you challenge that? And when you start having things like restrictions based on if you're vaccinated or not and someone says to you oh this is how it started in nazi germany for the jewish people you might be more susceptible to believing that but education and critical thinking is a large part of the answer for a lot of these things and sadly especially among american conservatives this is something that is not taught properly and of course the irony isn't lost on me 
that so many American conservatives are absolutely fanatical supporters of Israel while engaging in forms of Holocaust denial. But of course, a lot of their support for Israel is not because they are huge Zionists in the Israeli way. It's because they are Christian Zionists who want Israel to go to war with Iran to unlock Armageddon where Jews won't survive. So that is tackling, I'm like a Jew in Nazi Germany because I'm a conservative in America in 2022. But obviously, like I said, the more sinister one is the stuff to do with the pandemic because throughout history, going back to the plague of Justinian in the 400s, Jews have been blamed for diseases, for pandemics, and they have been persecuted and killed for the belief that they spread disease. Now, of course, that has been going on massively with the pandemic as well, but also what has been happening when there have been medical restrictions that you must wear a mask to enter this piece of private property or government property, or you must be vaccinated to attend this sporting event, they start saying, well, this is like Nazi Germany for the Jews. And because I don't want to go along with this nonsense, which would help protect the general population of the world, then I am just like a Jewish person in Nazi Germany. So let's read some of these insane quotes and stories about so many people doing this, including Republican congressmen. So CNN reporting, Marjorie Taylor Greene compares house mask mandates to the Holocaust. Republican representative Marjorie Taylor Greene during an interview on a conservative podcast this week compared House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's decision to continue to require members of the House to wear masks on the chamber floor to the steps the Nazis took to control the Jewish population during the Holocaust. Green, in conversation with the Christian Broadcasting Network's David Brody's Real America's Voice TV show, The Water Cooler, attacked Pelosi and accused her of being a hypocrite for asking Republican members to prove they had all had the vax before allowing members to be in the House chamber without a mask. You know, we can look back at a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second-class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to the gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Again, absolutely insane, absolutely gross. In my opinion, is clear Holocaust denial. So of course, like with that guy I showed you at the start, she apologised because she got a lot of backlash. I bet she probably still believes it, though. I'm truly sorry for offending people with the remarks about the Holocaust. Taylor Green told reporters outside the Capitol Monday, saying she has visited Washington's US Holocaust Memorial Museum earlier in the day. There's no comparison, and there never, ever will be. But yeah, just like most people who are happy to use this comparison, Marjorie Taylor Green has also a long history of being anti-Semitic. And recently, she was on Steve Bannon's own show, and she started talking about the globalist capitalists who are ruining our country before obviously she used to be talking about the Jewish space lasers thing. So again, not surprising that anti-Semites will pretend they are being persecuted like Jews in Nazi Germany because they engage in forms of Holocaust denial. But then here's another one. Wearing a Star of David, another lawmaker compares coronavirus measures to the Holocaust. Representative Jim Walsh has decried vaccine segregation and likened his state's lottery encouraging immunization against the virus to the Hunger Games. Then last weekend, the Republican lawmaker wore a yellow Star of David. It's an echo from history. He wrote of the star in the comments below a live stream. In the current context, we're all Jews. In the COVID-19 era, he later said the symbol was meant to convey how denying people their rights can lead to terrible outcomes. Aside from this and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Representative Madison Cawthorn, who had a great time visiting Hitler's eagle nest, suggested the same about potential vaccine passports. An Alaska state lawmaker said last year that COVID patients might be rounded up and taken elsewhere after comparing health screen stickers to the badges that once singled out Jewish people for persecution. So in another small town in America, about 15 people wore yellow stars to liken the oppression they say they feel as they resist COVID-19 vaccinations and masking to the oppression that Jews felt during the Holocaust. They donned yellow stars to express their fear that vaccination and masking is a similar prelude to a Holocaust similar to the extermination of 6 million Jews by the Nazis. Another Republican, Dr. Kelly Ward, the chair of the Arizona Republican Party. Earlier this week, she shared a tweet from Dr. Simone Gold, which asked, 
What's the difference between vaccine papers and a yellow star? 82 years in the body of her own tweet, Dr. Ward wrote exactly hashtag wake up America. So another one appalling. Scholars say Holocaust symbol has no place in Anchorage master bait. So Anchorage Mayor Dave Bronson later walked back his words, but at a contentious hearing Wednesday night, he defended the use of Holocaust imagery in the master bait. We've referenced the Star of David quite a bit here tonight, Bronson said, but there was a formal message that came out within Jewish culture about that, and the message was never again. And I think us borrowing from that is actually a credit to them. So I don't know about you, but when I read stuff like this, I try and imagine what context you have to grow up in, or what education you have to have, to feel comfortable like saying this in public as a politician in the most powerful nation in the world, one which has so much news coverage, where you know people are gonna see what you say, and you're literally in leading organizations for one of the major political parties, and you still say this stuff, and you still flippantly reference the Holocaust when you're talking about mask mandates and vaccinations, like it's somehow comparable. And like I said, the only explanation is these people are just insanely anti-Semitic, and that's either ideological anti-Semitism or just some sort of naivety which leads to that anti-Semitism. And of course, these people are all called out, and you see in multiple stories, they're forced to apologise, but there has to be something that gets to the point where you're comfortable to say this in public. Like, you don't fear the criticism, you don't even think you're gonna get a pushback. Like, these people are probably surprised when everyone's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, even with Marjorie Taylor Greene, Obviously, main people in our own party force her to apologize. They're like, what the hell is wrong with you? How can you even say this? But it shows there's a grown element on the right that is very comfortable doing this. And of course, the Republicans who are even against this rhetoric bear some responsibility because they fostered this increasingly radical fringe to become part of the mainstream. But like I've also outlined, nearly all the people saying this are actually people who are racist against Jewish people as well. And this rhetoric around health measures, pandemics, and all this stuff in terms of persecuting Jewish people has been extremely common for over a thousand years. So I referenced the plague of Justinian before, which was this plague in the 400s that ravaged large parts of Europe, but it ravaged Constantinople. Justinian actually got the plague and he survived, but they started blaming the origins and the spread from various different minority groups in the city, including Jewish people, and they locked all these minority groups up together in a certain part of Constantinople. But using pandemics as a pretext of persecution of Jewish people doesn't just stop with the 400s. So I wanna read some articles just talking about how this is very, very common in anti-Semitism. COVID-19 and the far right's diminishing memory of the Holocaust, just talk more about the history as well. So we talked about the plague of Justinian in the 400s, but here's another one. In 1349, as the bubonic plague swept through Europe, citizens of, of Erfurt, Germany, massacred the city's Jewish community. The pogrom was one of over 325 recorded organized attacks on Jewish communities during the peak of that pandemic. Scholars point to pre-plague anti-Semitism and the otherization of Jews, which enabled European leaders to blame them, including the far spreading rumors that Jews had poisoned the wells. During World War I, typhus outbreaks spread across Northeast Europe, including Germany, Poland, Ukraine, and Russia. Many localities called it the Jewish fever. Only a few years later, members of the Nazi party would accuse the Jews of being vectors of lice and diseases like typhus and the start of a sustained propaganda campaign of dehumanization against the German Jewish community. So another article from The Atlantic, Germany's anti-vaccination history is riddled with anti-Semitism as well. During the plague outbreak of 1712 and 1713, for instance, the city of Hamburg initiated public health measures, including forbidden Jews from entering or leaving the city. Philip Austin, the director of Hamburg's Institute for History and Ethics of Medicine told me, by the time cholera emerged in the 19th century, sickening thousands of people in the city within a matter of months, these antiquated ideas had taken on a new form. These ideas might have been innocuous enough on their own, but consummated through social movements and disinformation, they often pose a threat to people's lives. As the historian Richard J. Evans has noted in Death in Hamburg, some Germans blame the spread of cholera on the Jews. These sentiments then extended to other epidemics and to the vaccination movement. By the middle of the 19th century, anti-Semitic propaganda leaflets were being written against smallpox vaccinations. So as those articles were outlining historic like anti-Semitism 
tied with pandemics and stuff like that. It is a very bizarre mix to both blame Jewish people for the pandemic and diseases and stuff, while also taking their greatest suffering and saying, well, that is happening to you because of your choice in believing in medical misinformation. But I guess the through line is, while these people are taking some imagery of the Holocaust and imagery of the persecution of the Jews, they also are the type of people who engage in Holocaust denial through Holocaust revisionism. They're the type of people who believe it's exaggerated. They're the type of people who believe the numbers aren't as high as people say. They're the type of people who believe that even the Jewish people might have been responsible for it as propaganda and stuff like that. And with that in mind, you can see why they might compare themselves to Jewish people in the 1930s and 1940s Germany, while also blaming Jewish people for the pandemic as well. Of course, with far-right movements and conservative movements, a lot of things contradict each other. There's a lot of hypocrisy. But of course, this is just so, so common in their movement that now they feel comfortable just saying it. Just say you're being persecuted like a 1930s Jewish person for the most ridiculous of things, just because people don't like you because you're conservative. And also it goes without saying, the belief that someone in the Western world is persecuted for being a straight white Christian is just insane because most of Western Europe in terms of the leadership and the owners of business and stuff are white Christian men and white Christian people. Look at most European countries. Look at America. Joe Biden is still a white conservative Christian, is he not? Donald Trump was one as well. Nearly every US president was a white conservative Christian man. Vladimir Putin, people like Orban in Hungary, leaders of Poland, leaders of loads of European countries are white Christian dudes. And you're acting like because some people are a bit mean to you sometimes, including Joe Biden in like one speech, even though he used to call segregationists his best pals, you think you're being oppressed. And like I said, the only reason anyone could believe that being a white, straight, conservative person in America in 2022 is like being a Jew in Nazi Germany is if they engage in Holocaust denial. And people need to understand as well, denial isn't just someone saying that didn't happen. It's someone downplaying it. It's someone questioning the numbers, saying it was exaggerated. That's denial. And by saying that the plight of you, a Christian in America, is the same as a Jew in 1930s, that is denial as well. How do you tackle things like that? Of course, education, critical thinking. The reason people said they filmed the death camps in the first place is because they knew loads of people wouldn't believe it because they hate Jewish people. And even after the war, Jewish people returned home, returned home to Poland, and what happened? They were killed by the local population. And the renewed rise of the far right in Western countries has renewed anti-Semitism and social media amplifies their lies. It amplifies all this denial and makes it more widespread. And when you see in America, there's also a war on education where there's a war on supposed critical race theory or there's a war on teaching Americans actual history because you don't want to offend them. Then you have countries like Poland which have banned criticism of Polish collaborators in doing the Holocaust as well. You see this war on education and supposed left-wing politics is also a war on teaching history properly. So sadly, I expect more people in more mainstream conservative movements to start using 1930s Germany, being a Jewish person and the Holocaust as just something to flippantly say about you being a conservative. So while engaging in denial, they also engage in the politics that caused the Holocaust in the first place. So anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.